Now, let's talk about how we can do a hypothesis test with the loon data. We're interested in eventually finding a p-value, and we'll do that by calculating a probability using what we know from the t-statistic here. So the t-statistics is used in a hypothesis test about a population mean mu with its population standard deviation unknown. Remember, the t-statistics can be found by taking the mean of the sample y bar minus mu sub zero, some value we're interested in, and dividing that by the standard error, or the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And we can say then that the calculated value for t is the number of estimated standard errors y bar is from the hypothesized mean mu. When we do a hypothesis test, we can have multiple conclusions. We can first set up our test depending on what side of the distribution we want to test. We can do a left tail test. This is going to say when our alternative hypothesis suggests that some value mu is less than some value mu sub zero. We could do a right tail test. Here's where all our alternative hypothesis states that the mean value mu is greater than some value mu sub zero. We can do a two tail test. And this is where we say that our alternative hypothesis says that mu is just not equal to mu sub zero. That is, we could have two different regions. It could be less than or greater than some specified value that we suggest. So the p-value, again, are going to tell us how much evidence we have to prove or disprove our null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis states that the claim we seek to disprove, the probability that measures the strength of the evidence against the null hypothesis is what we call the p-value. Another way to frame that is that the probability computed assuming that the value or the hypothesis for the null hypothesis is true is that the statistic would take a value as or more extreme than the one actually observed. That's what we call the p-value of the test. Small p-values are evidence against the null hypothesis because they say that the observed result is unlikely to occur when the null hypothesis is true. Large p-values fail to give convincing evidence against the null hypothesis because they say that the observed result is likely to occur by chance when the null hypothesis is true. So here's how the p-value relates to our level of significance. If the p-value is less than the value alpha we set, then we reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is greater than or equal to alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, or in other words, we accept the null hypothesis. This is why it's so important to set the level of significance alpha before we test our statistical data. Now we're going to go back to the loon example and do a hypothesis test with the data we have comparing it to some value. Now remember that the elevated mercury content of loon eggs occurs when the mercury content is greater than 0.5 parts per million. And so let's consider our null hypothesis that the mean value mu is equal to 0.5. And then our alternative hypothesis will be a one-tailed test that states the value mu is greater than 0.5. And so we're going to perform some calculations that carry out a alpha equals 0.05 test, which rejects the claim when these conditions are present. That is the value when the t statistic that we calculate is going to be uh, some value where if we look up the value for t with 59 degrees of freedom and a level of significance of 0.05, is equal to 1.671. Now that value 1.671 is what we could obtain from a t table, or we could obtain that from software. And so we're going to show you too about how to read the t table to find out that value 1.671.
then we're going to look and see what the answer is. Uh, that is, will we reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis that examines the loon egg mercury content?